Hello, hello, OdaFest podcast listeners. It's Angelo, and I'm here with Dio, Nancy, and Jay for another episode of the OdaFest podcast. Huzzah! Hello. Yay! We're back. Hello, we're back. We're all back. It's Turkey and Day. On it is. Saturday, November 5th. 2022 from 4 p.m to 10 p.m join odafest as we celebrate the supernatural with a yokai themed night festival tickets are available online for 15 dollars and will include your very own yokai themed lantern which you can use to take part in our lantern lighting ceremony then take home as a souvenir there will be presentations and panels happening both indoors and outdoors as well as a small exhibitor's hall. Check out the event details via facebook.com slash OdaFest. Yay. Yay! It's been a Yo project... Kai. It's been a project of uh, Tracy, who used to head the Maid Cafe for many years, and she's wanted to do this for quite a while, let me tell you. And I'm not even saying because of like COVID or whatnot. She's been wanting to do something like this. She's very much into yokai cultures uh, and and like themes Spooky and stuff, stuff like that. Spookies. Um, but you know, she's finally got it off the ground. I don't know if it'll become an annual thing at all, so don't expect that. But I would say go have fun at the first one. At least. Yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy mm -hmm. it for what exactly. it is. Exactly. Go enjoy some yokai, like mm -hmm. Japanese folklore, spoopy ghosts yeah. on a, a right after. You know, if you didn't get enough spoopy during the month of October, the you know the weekend following Halloween, you get a little bit of spoopy stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Weather, yep, yep, yep. weather. I think is not going to be a major factor. We are doing things outdoors, I believe, but. Uh, Worst case scenario, we can try to move them in. So we're, I don't think there's any contingency plans for canceling. Like, just come. Yeah, exactly. Come, enjoy, have a good time. There's going to be a small exhibitors hall. So, you know, it might be a good opportunity if you're doing some early Christmas shopping and you want to get some, um, you know, some nerdy Japanese culture anime related goodies for the, the nerds in your life. This might and be a good uh, nudge, opportunity. Nudge. Before no. Christmas arrives, I don't right? know any of those people. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know people. I don't know people. What's anime. I have never known a single weeaboo in my life. No, never. <clears throat> Only anime enjoyers. <laughs> yes, enjoyers. I don't even know what is an anim anime. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Says the Dio who talked games? about Edge Runners last week. <laughs> And, I sure did. And made I sure me did. want to did watch I, it. Did I talk you into watching it? You sure did. And oh, I have I'm to glad. say, I super agree with all of it. Um, again, ah, no spoilers for anyone. But uh, damn, Studio Trigger. Damn, always, yes. always with the mm, and the they oof and the with punch. The mm? And, the, and uh? the everything. It was really, really and visually ow. spectacular. Um, <laughs> I watched on Netflix. So my experience might be a little bit different, but there were a couple of things in the subtitles that really bothered me. Uh, okay. Some of some of the, I know they were really trying to dress up the subtitles and the dialogue to actually match the slang and everything they use in cyberpunk because they recognize a bunch of the, uh, like the names they would call each other. Recognize a whole yeah, bunch of yeah. They'd be that. like, oh, come here, Choom. Yeah. You're such a gonk head. Yeah. Or yeah, all that stuff. Really well done. But a lot That's of their funny. phone calls were just really, really hard to, to follow. That yes. was something I noticed as well. So Angelo and I watched it in Japanese on we Netflix. Did too. Oh, and then I watched it a second time by myself on Netflix in English. And I will say it was way easier to follow in English yeah. because you didn't have to. Well, so one of the things is the things that they're saying in English actually match the subtitles exactly mm. 
So it, it, it was less jarring. Whereas like in Japanese, I could hear that they weren't calling they, they, the, the subtitle said Chum, yeah, but, but what they, they said was not Chum. Oh. So there, that, that like disconnect was very noticeable in Japanese. I have enough yeah, I grasp of the Japanese language where I actually struggle when I am listening to something being said, but the subtitles are not what they're saying. Don't match. And yeah, that when really it doesn't match, off. it's jarring. So and so that, that was threw me off with this show as well. I Were they... concur. As a person who knows that uh, Keikaku means plan and Jozu <laughs> means skilled, that uh, <laughs> I can sometimes catch when the subtitles do not match. <gasps> Were they Ariana. using something... Were they using um like a new slang in Japanese instead of chum, or were they using something more no. like nah, sort of they were the brotherly like anarchy kind of thing? No, nope, nothing at all. No? So they were speaking in Japanese. It was like very regular regular speech. Like it was like the oh, way regular okay. people talk. Yeah. Okay, versus, it wasn't it wasn't um, like yakuza type language. Or... No, not at all. No, I see. Interesting. Although that versus... would have made a lot more sense if they had done like a very yakuza been fun. spin. That would have fit. That really yeah, you see what fit. I mean? Like yeah, like. Some good old like, like Oi, and... no, They're actually as on a, on a quick side note. Um, I don't really play uh, the Yakuza game series, but I watch a lot of people play it. It's a very popular series, and it's fun to watch. Um, but they're slowly moving away from Yakuza being in the title, and like it's not titled Yakuza in Japan, anyways. But in America, it has been in the past but now they're slowly moving towards unifying the title se the series title uh towards um the japanese meaning which is like a dragon ryuga gatoku or something like that yeah and yeah. Uh, i think it's just because you know there's still pretty negative connotations uh at With least in japan Yakuza. obviously and then they were mm -hmm. like well we don't need to use that branding anymore in the states it's popular enough so we can switch over but i just thought it was something interesting yeah, yeah that, that is, is something interesting, interesting. for sure anyway, i will say so. that it is noticeable in edge runners like the english dub is quite well done um and because it's the the english dub uses the same slang like when the characters say choom in the subtitles they say the english dub characters say choom and so sure. i found because they, they do these very stylized for some of the subtitles they do really stylized text word art subtitles mm -hmm. especially when they're doing um like when a, characters a are moment. calling each other oh. yeah um for example like they're calling each other they're not using like a smartphone or something they're calling each other using through like neural heads. trips right? right so it's like through their minds and so mm -hmm. the way that they stylize the subtitles for that is they show it on screen yeah. almost like a screen wrapping around the animated character's eye which yeah. is really cool visually and very immersive but it does make the subtitles really hard to to read, to read sometimes. and then mm. and then if if it's hard to read and then you can also hear the the audible difference of language cadence versus what you're seeing in the subtitles which i think even if you don't speak japanese you would hear it mm -hmm. um uh, it, it it can be a bit, it's a bit jarring. Yeah. The English dub I find didn't have that problem. And I think that's also because in the English dub, you're not, because you, if you're a native English speaker watching the English dub, you're not relying on the subtitles as much. Yeah, it's true. But there were a lot of times where in phone calls, uh, it almost sounded like the subtitles were trying to give off this very cool, trendy, uh, attitude mode the of characters speaking, are not speaking with and the characters all. aren't doing that and then there's there's a lot of like word uh duplicating as well and sometimes it looks like it's a mistake and other times you can absolutely hear if somebody was like a little jazzed out and was talking like that you know yeah exactly but it was really but hard to differentiate it's it's still it's it's a it's an interesting choice for how they they stylize the subtitles um I will say I wish Netflix had done that. The easy solution to this was do different subtitles for like if you're watching a language broadcast mm -hmm. with English subs versus watching the English with English subs because it is different. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, OK, aside from aside from language related stuff, holy cow, this is 100 percent more violent than I was expecting. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I was already expecting it to be violent because I've 
played some cyberpunk before and it was just like that extra trigger level of violent and of it was cartoon just, violence yeah yeah just, really threw me for a loop for the first couple of times it happened and then I like acclimated mentally to it and then I was fine but I was just like that was wow that was you're like wow head. that was really gory when, yeah, when you see someone wow. get blasted in the face with a shotgun and all that's left over is is a stump with a bottom jaw and teeth it's not for yeah, oh, yeah. it is it is a little bit a little bit out there it's, it's as hyper-violent as some, like, the old 1980s OVAs. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Anyway. It's definitely got that vibe. Yeah. But for you, who was best girl? Oh, uh, well, it definitely... Oh, wait, no. Can't say that. Oh, I don't want to say anything on... No, I'm. we're going to take this conversation offline. I don't want to say anything that may <laughs> potentially spoil anything for anyone. I so. was going to say, that's a, that's a dangerous question. Yeah, this yeah, is a dangerous that's a, that's question. A, for spoilers. A dangerous Fine. and cruel because question. Because I also it. haven't watched it yet, so I'm, i yes. got to get around to it. Uh, I do and have some I don't days off coming up. Jay's decision. Who was best girl <laughs> and why you. was it Rebecca? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Leave people alone. Let people discover... The joy of the characters for themselves. Yeah, I am not going to say any more on that. There were a lot of very good girls. Yes. Yeah, yeah the characters are, are a big part of the fun of the story totally. for sure. Totally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, suffice it to say, 100% enjoyed. Um, would watch again. And I don't say that a lot about a lot of shows. Yeah. Yeah, Ooh. it's definitely worth a rewatch. I've rewatched it already. I would happily rewatch it again. It's good. It's really enjoyable. All 100%. I can say is, from the perspective of someone who hasn't seen it, like and and men the mention of like Studio Trigger and obviously the art, the the very recognizable art style. When I saw the like, trailer, all I could think was like, "Yay, it's Pro Mare again!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and that that alone already made me very happy because I would say that uh, I've probably seen Pro Mare maybe three or four times in the last two years, which is actually saying a lot for someone like me who. You it is never very much things. does not rewatch things, but I, like now I, I would say that I haven't actually gone out and watched it by myself as a rewatch, which is a whole other level. Uh, but I have happily gone to friends places where they're like, let's go watch, like, let's watch Promare together. And I'm like, yes, I'll do that. You're like, you. yes, I'm down to do that. It doesn't matter that I've seen it before. I will happily watch yes. it again. Yeah. Like, and that's a big compliment. It means that despite the it's fact that you know all the tricks, you know the narrative, you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. You just you it's it's enjoyable. It's I like actually enjoy. Promare has the same stuff going for it that Redline has going for it, where it's just even if you know what the story's doing, the animation and all of the action is just so good that you can watch it a hundred times. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not in a row. Mm -hmm. Maybe, but you could watch it a hundred times. Yeah. 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 Speaking of, I guess, animated movies, we'll touch on this. <laughs> I don't know. The yes. other animated movie on the other Another, side of the spectrum. Yeah. 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 On the other end. Mar Super Mario movie trailer came out on, an, the, on the Nintendo Direct. Out. Direct. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, I would say it's been all over the internet, so you can't really have missed it. It, I think it looks fun, but we're all let down by the same element. <laughs> Indeed. But we were also, I, this is the other thing. I think a lot of people were really excited for a different element. It, like, as much as people were like, mm, Chris Pratt, Mario, don't know how I feel about that. Jack Black, Bowser? Mm! Oh, that if, felt if, if so that man, good. If he does the Bowser voices in the games going forward, no one would be upset. We'll be upset. <laughs> no one would be upset. Not to say great. not to say that the not to say that the current voice actor doesn't do a great job. It's exactly. just that he really does nail the Jack Blackness and the Bowserness. Yeah, of it, his it like fits. like like it just works. It's mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> After that trailer, did you guys have to double check if Jack Black was voicing Bowser? No, I knew. Like, right. I, I knew he was supposed to be voicing Bowser, but it felt like such a completely 
different character from every other time that Jack Black voices someone, right? But he yeah, liked, which I, I really agree. liked. I mm. really liked because, you know, like, Jack Black Jack Black is the character actor. Like, he's the character voice actor of physical actors. And I think as, as, a, as a repercussion of that, like, he tends to get typecast in that people are like, could oh, be, you be. do the funny, you do the funny, quirky Oh, you're the character. Tenacious D guy. You're the, you're yeah. the School of Rock so, guy. Like, so can you go do yeah. that Tenacious D that, like, can you go do the School of the Rock voice? The wild, funny rock boy. Like, the wild, yeah. on, can you go do it on this character and also on this character and also on that character and that one yeah. and that one, too? And everyone and knows what gets, we're talking about. It's like, he's like, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, like you know that Poe guy, which is nothing wrong. Kung Fu Panda, Jack Black did a very good job, but it's, it's so clearly Jack movie. Black that it's they're one and the same. You yeah, know? you do. He doesn't get the opportunity to be a character, whereas voice actor, where he gets to be the character, and the character isn't Jack Black. Jack mm-hmm. Black as Bowser True. felt like a Bowser, not a Jack Black. Yeah, it feels like a character, and it the does... fact that it's Jack Black's voice just is like. Oh my god, that's so cool to hear Jack Black do that voice. Yeah. I think they must have done a little mocap or something though as well because there is a little essence of Jack Black's face in 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 Bowser's face, which is fine, I think, but it's just like it's it's interesting yeah. as well, but yeah, like everyone's raving about Jack Black as Bowser. No one really is I don't think Nobody there's a single to talk person about Mario. No one <laughs> Yeah, like what is there to say that hasn't been already said? I think okay. the only thing that I can I can even like remotely think of is I remember I watched the Nintendo Direct on um Twitch with with like like with a streamer, right? And we're we're all watching it. And the intro, they're like, you know, there's Shigeru Miyamoto and then there's like uh some dude from Imagination, which I believe is a studio who's doing it. They're the ones who do like Despicable Me. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh, we, uh, and Chris Pratt is here. And Chris Pratt, like, you know, this is again, this is before you see the trailer. And they do a little intro. And Chris Pratt does this thing where he's like, he's trying really hard to be, I think, funny or some kind of, he trying but to gain some sort of connection. Awkward. because Yeah, because he was all like, I remember playing Mario on the arcade. And then he was all like making a weird joke about that like, he doesn't know what a Koopa Troopa is. Like, like he, he couldn't really make the bit work. And yeah. then the trailer actually happened. And there was just like this giant thing where it's just like, man, like... I don't know. It just seems like I don't want to say he doesn't care. I think he does. But the reality is that voice acting and regular acting are very different skill sets. They yes, definitely they are. are definitely cross sectional. You can definitely take a lot of the skills from one and translate them to the other. But there are a lot of very specialized nuances that you can't like 100 percent just be like oh because i am a good film actor i will be a fantastic voice actor that is sometimes true and very often not true Mm -hmm. one thing that i noticed with (laughs) what we got out of the uh the trailer mario only had two lines he had like what is this place and everybody online is like oh it's just chris pratt as chris pratt uh, but then he had his second line, which was "Mushroom Kingdom, here we come," and it just sounded completely different. It almost sounded like Chris Pratt was trying to channel New York Mario from the '90s movie. <laughs> and maybe he was. Yeah. We don't know. We, it's hard to tell from two lines, and that yeah. worries me. <laughs> yeah. I think the thing that was interesting to me is like, or the thing that was hard for me was seeing the frustration of like the larger voice actor um, and voice talent community, because, you know, this is not the first movie where it's happened where like uh, an animated franchise or um, a, a game franchise or something gets adapted to the big screen mm-hmm. and uh, the voice talent that gets selected for the production is whoever has the biggest star power mm. and it's over like the people who have 
brought those characters to life in the past. And I bring it up because, you know, a lot of people are talking about it with respect to Mario because Mm -hmm. it's, you know, obviously the original voice actor for Mario, you know, was interested in the role and did not get the opportunity to be a part of the role, regardless of how he may or may not have been willing to alter the voice he does for Mario. But, you know, when I think about it, when I think of other like really big successful shows, I think about Arcane and I think about how like Arcane is a League of Legends adaptation but the characters Mm -hmm. in those characters had voices like they they had voices in league of legends and they have voices in the other spin-off um league of legends games Mm -hmm. but their character actors weren't brought back for um the arcane series and now to be fair the voice talent like that they chose for arcane yes they're big singers and actors in it, but they they also did just genuinely do a really really good job like the they voice did. direction was that, really the great the skill that was present in arcane was off the charts it was yeah. clear they had a fantastic director there was a lot of extremely nuanced emoting um just everything came together so well yeah it was it was intentional there's a lot of choice and you could hear it it's hard to tell from the super mario trailer because again as angelo said you only hear chris pratt speak like two whole lines yeah um we won't jack know black as bowser sounds out. amazing mm-hmm. but until the movie comes out it's gonna be hard to tell how mm-hmm. good or bad chris pratt sounds and it just is I, I I understand and I feel a lot for the voice talent community that are just like, you know, we, Hire we give one our, of our heart and our soul and we give everything to mm-hmm. voice these characters on TV. And then as soon as they get uh, brought to the big screen, we kind of get dusted under the rug. And I'm like, for yeah, sure. that, that really sucks. I, I, I <laughs> That's think really it's unfair. I'm looking forward to the movie, but I don't know if I'm actually going to go see it in the theaters. It's, it's hard to say at this point yeah it's definitely hard for me to say as well like the animation looks great Mm -hmm. um it looks like it has in terms of story writing it looks like it has a good balance between um the seriousness that they like of the narrative that they want to portray and also just like you know the silliness of the universe and they've it looks like they've hit a good balance of that but until the movie's out i can't really know so Mm -hmm. mario the question on everybody's mind though is the Super Mario movie anime? Why would it be anime? What? Why wouldn't it? It's a Japanese property. No, no, please, no. <laughs> that no, no. doesn't qualify. That doesn't mean that doesn't nec- like automatically qualify it as a as an anime. I think that it's absolutely not anime. I I just wanted to throw that as a wrench in there. It was a very confusing wrench. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> what I was going to comment on was that Mario's visual uh, appearance was also a bit of a surprise to me. They kind of took Mario's classic look and they removed yeah, his they did dumpy. Make some changes. Yeah, they removed his dumpy. <laughs> yeah, they've they've uh, they nerfed Mario's ass. They've made him very um, he, he has palatable. Hill syndrome. They also made his they made his mustache very. Um, does anyone remember the Lonely Island uh, yeah. video? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. The greasy pencil stash. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, it's a very interesting. They've made it. I don't I don't understand I the also choice. Don't understand it's not it. it's not terrible, but it's not good. It's just it's I'm confused. I don't understand. And I'm confused. And I I, I just want to understand that. That sounds that sounds correct. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I have mixed feelings. I'm just going to keep an open mind. It'll be fine. Yeah, that's that's the same way I am. It'll be fun for kids. And that's and it you know what? Ultimately, if it's fun for kids, then good. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It like it's not supposed to be possibly be worse than the 1990s Super Mario movie. Do not we Apollo Gift that. of Prophecy that. Do we not don't. do that we because don't. now you are speaking it into existence that it will be. There's only like two or three things worse than the 1990s Mario movie. And that's basically X-Arm in the Emoji movie. And now you're about to make it a fourth by manifesting it. You are certainly <laughs> bad He's a bad man. fate, sir. The existence of man's. Jack Black in the movie makes it at least good. We hope. The worst it can do is good. He's a bad man. He's threatening it. You just don't tempt fate. 
Okay. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Don't tempt fate. <sighs> I feel like tempting fate is everything that Spooky Month is all about. I guess so. Spooky Month is definitely all about danger. It's about spooky things and chasing ghosts. Scary. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and avoiding the, 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 the dreaded D word and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's What's the dreaded about, D word? About the, the devil. The, that one too. Oh, I was going to say death, but sure, that works too. Oh. But it's all about, it's, it's all <laughs> Clearly about. Clearly there are different, about... <laughs> different D words. Yeah, I, I was, was thinking like... a completely different D word. <laughs> Don't worry about oh my it. God. Don't worry about it. They both start D with D word D stands e. for degenerate. Yeah. <laughs> that also is a true. D and E word. Yeah. yeah. D gens. Of... Absolute yeah. D gens. Indeed. But it's also what? about, you know, getting some some treats, dressing up in uh cause this is the, this is the the month where it, it everybody is it's it, the okay whole world to is cosplay your, the whole world is your anime con yes be yeah, true uh i am excited to see how many genshin characters uh will be walking along my street oh i hope oh, there's I many hope there's lots. i hope so i hope so too i want to really see a bad. little parade of like Klee's and nahitas that would be, <gasps> that would be so cute yeah i want to see people in cosplays i want to see people like uh, make it up costumes and, do, and doing fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't uh, I haven't asked or found out, you know, if like people dress up at work where I work, because that's the thing. I don't want to dress up if I'm the only one, because then it's weird. But if other people do too, <laughs> then it's not weird. Just but put I on your best then cosplay. You can be weird together. Put on your best yeah. cosplay. Nobody else calls, shows up, so you also bring like a clown nose. <laughs> just exactly. <laughs> just to put it like, on and just be like, clowns. "Oh, I made a mistake." <laughs> yeah, I did some uh, perfect. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel. Like- I I want to know if people are gonna be doing fun stuff but either way i hope i get to see lots of people out on the street in costumes and and having a good time Mm because you know i feel like when you're a little kid halloween is all about like trick-or-treating like that's it it's all about for sure you get dressed out you go trick-or-treat as an adult i i think a lot of adult halloween activities are based around parties or like yeah. um going out and drinking right like which you, is not you go to a I gotta it's, say, not it's not bad. As cool, it's not bad but i i actually think it's, it's just not, not as, as interesting it's yeah not it's not as fun scene. like I, I i get like you know maybe once it, it, on the odd occasion it might be fun to like do a costume party and go to like a bar all dressed up or or you know like it's fun to go to a friend's house and we can watch some like spooky movies like a spooky movie marathon with friends is really fun oh i do that like that's so fun but you know Only i don't really want to go whole time heckling yes oh, yeah. absolutely of course that's a requirement it's like watching trolls too you only watch watching like on Halloween, and, C and, and B you want to be like, oh my god, they're eating him, and then they're going to eat me. What? Oh my god. god! Yes, like that's the thing. That stuff is fun, but I don't want to like. I don't want to just get dressed up and go drink and then you know go home and pass out. Like that's. True. I don't. I don't think that's really that fun. Like. So I don't like that part of adult Halloween culture, but I like that it's starting to shift a little bit now Mm. where people are less about like, oh, let's go to a bar in costumes. Yeah, let's go get dressed up and go get wasted. And like the whole ladies are expected just to wear like, you know, the most the most revealing revealing outfit possible. Sexy version version of everything. Of yeah. everything, I like now that I'm starting to see a shift where people are starting to be more creative with their costumes yeah. and they're they're coming up with random things. And then you also see people like going to work in costume, and you'll just see people during the day who are dressed up. And even if they're not necessarily wearing a costume, they might be wearing like a witch hat, or yeah. they might be wearing like a little pumpkin, you know. I w- headband and stuff like I like that stuff I like when people get festive and they're having fun in their own way mm-hmm. and it's not just like you either have to be a kid to have fun with this or you have to specifically go to a bar and you're not allowed to or, have fun any other way or you have to be the hardcore where like your movie level makeup for the like like I yeah not to, not to take away that level of fun or anything but it's also like fine to just Dress, dress up, a, up bit. a little bit, yeah. Yeah, instead of going all full out. Like for totally. me, if I might do something for like a work costume, 
but I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do a costume costume. I kind of want to just. I've been thinking about getting those black sclera. Uh, uh, oh, the contacts. Yeah. Contacts. Oh. The big creepies. So it's just like I might be there in my like regular work outfit. But and, you then, have and, then, and then like yeah, when I when I like when a you know coworker is like, hey Jay, what's up? And I you know I'm like, oh not much. And then just like give them the big black eye. You know, and like, they, and get the, like, they get the oh. jump scare. Exactly. Yeah, yeah like Even stuff like that is so just fun. Have, like a small drop of blood at like the the corner of your mouth. Yeah, just a little. Nah, let's bit. just catch up. <laughs> just catch up. It's just catch up. It's just catch up. Yeah, stuff like that is fun. Like I know some people really love to do like they love to get into like doing the prosthetics and really fun stuff, which is super cool. And if I've you done that to before do that. as well. Yeah. But I love like I, the thing I love about Halloween is it's like it's an accessible holiday for everyone. You know. For all the witches I I will see who have like um, super dark green, like they've done their whole face in green and they've attached the big nose and they've put a big ward on it and they have like the full outfit. You know, you'll also see people who are just, they're wearing it black and they have like a cool hat and that's it. Or they'll be happy, Hermione right? from fun. Harry Potter, and they'll be like, "That All right. too." Like yeah. they're they'll just be having a good Run time in their it. own way, and like I I love that. Like you'll see people in every level of dress, and you know it's like it's the one holiday where you're allowed to you know express yourself and have fun, and uh, you know, and and everybody's just having a good time in their own way. I think yes. October just generally has my favorite holidays because it's also yeah. right now we're recording on uh thanksgiving monday yeah and thanksgiving I th- i've said this before thanksgiving is the best version of christmas <laughs> yes <laughs> because it's there's a way less drama stress. way less stress it's get together with your friends and family it's and still just eat some food. chill and eat just relax eat some food hang out and, and feel watch good. stuff whatever do whatever you want but there's like no like expectations. You gotta go get that gift. You gotta make you gotta sure you send out card. those cards. Did to, you go to you know, blah 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 person's Christmas yeah. party? Did you make sure to call so and so on Christmas yeah, Eve? Yeah, you know? like like it's Thanksgiving. Just hang Just out. Eat. Just hang eat, out and eat. Bring bring some food if it's a potluck or whatever. Like yeah. it's just so simple. Like you want to talk about accessible holidays? October is accessible holiday month. <laughs> yes. yes. And I love it. I love it. It's just fun. You're not wrong. I partly I partly committed a Thanksgiving sin <gasps> and I'm not sorry for Did it. Did you not eat? That, no, that's no, no, the no. only sin I can fat? think of. So, <laughs> yeah. One of one of the key parts of Thanksgiving is having so much leftovers that you're eating turkey sandwiches for a month, right? Don't I disagree. I think that's a th- I think that's a thing that happens. Fuck that noise. But I don't think it's an actual tradition. I think so, it's yeah. just a thing that happens. It's a thing that happens. It's a thing that happens so often that it might as well be tradition. Instead, instead of getting like a big ass bird, because the the smallest bird that you can get in stores oh, is like did seven. You, pounds. Did you do it my way? Is I it got thing? bird loaf. Yeah, bro. I got bird, bird loaf. loaf. And it was so good. Bird loaf was they, perfectly aren't, sized. Aren't they? To have a little bit more than half a pound of bird per person, which yeah. is a lot of bird. It yeah. is, but it's great. And so you, I've you said this several up... times for multiple yeah. years at this point. <laughs> and you are so correct for it because, like, we we fed. So, I mean, Angelo and I had a Thanksgiving dinner together yesterday um, with my parents and Angelo's mom and my siblings. So we're talking about you know eight 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 people or so. Mm-hmm. Six. Or sorry, or six. six people. Six people. I don't know where I got eight from. Um, six people. And, you know, you don't want to, like a whole bird, if you get a whole turkey, even if you get a super small turkey, your half of that turkey is going home with people. Mm-hmm. And a little bit of turkey leftovers isn't bad because like, yes, you know, you'll get to have breakfast the next day or lunch or dinner and you can mm-hmm, make turkey mm-hmm. sandwiches and blah, blah, blah. But it gets, it becomes a big nuisance when you're taking home so much food that it's like you get to eat turkey that you've put in the freezer for the next two weeks. And that's all you get to eat because there's so much turkey. Like yeah. I hate that. No. So I, it's like, so like, nice to get a bird loaf because you have a little bit of yeah. leftovers, but not like. An absurd amount. An absurd amount. Like everybody is taking home a meal for mm-hmm. dinner the next day. And they're Not- like, it's 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 still like quality meat. You can, if you like dark meat, there's dark meat ones. There's dark and wh- uh, white white meat ones. One. And you can, or you can get a full white meat one, which is totally fine. They're all good. And 
You don't it's have to deal with a carcass. You don't have to deal with a carcass. There's way less mess when you're making it. Yep. I would say the only downside is if you're really into making like a broth or, you know, like for traditional yeah, if you soup want or something soup like that. After, you don't have the bones left over. You don't have the yeah. bones for it, unfortunately. And you probably won't have enough meat over, left over to actually make a turkey noodle soup anyways. But if you just want way cleaner operation, way cleaner like preparation, just do the bird loaf. Commit bird to loaf. bird loaf. I agree. And bird loaf is cheaper during Thanksgiving. It was not as cheap for me. Hmm, like the one that I got, it was uh, 22 bucks. Whereas a when, larger when did you buy turkey, it? I bought it about five days beforehand. Right now, for that same like turkey loaf, I can almost guarantee you it's less than 20 bucks. It's probably close to 17 or 13, depending on the size. I know this because I I stock up on turkey loaves for when I'm because it's just protein and I'll be like uh, a I'll get it pound later. Turkey, for yeah. example, they were going for like fifteen to seventeen, mm. so you can get more meat and you have the bones and everything with a a proper turkey. Technically, it's not more meat. There's a lot of bone, <laughs> but the prep is a little bit more difficult. Like with the bird loaf, you yes. just season it. You season it, you throw it in the oven. And you're done. Three and a half hours, four hours later, you're done. Yeah, you don't even have to defrost it. That's that's also Yeah, great. you don't even have to defrost it. You just season and it and you're good to go. There are Versus versions with, the... with, with stuffing inside if you really want to do stuffing. Yeah. I usually just do stuffing away from the bird, honestly. but And that's what we did as well. I like yeah. my mom's stuffing, whereas like store-bought stuffing is fine, yeah. but not great you know it's... yeah homemade stuffing is always like a very nice experience mm-hmm. yeah meanwhile nice i just flavor. had hot pot for thanksgiving and also that is go. super valid i think yeah. that's the other thing as well is like so like the other fun thing about thanksgiving is like at the end of the day thanksgiving is really actually only like a holiday in a couple of countries a couple of specific countries mm-hmm. and that's because it's supposed well, to it's be just canada it's, the u.s it's no the, yeah, it's not it's just America. canada the u.s no, no, well, no, no. It's also celebrated in some parts of the Caribbean, be in one country in South America. Okay, so it's not but just I think Canada it is generally it's it's, it's, it's this it's side a, of the Atlantic. Yeah, like it's it's very much like a a colonial holiday. Let's mm. let's say because it's it's about you know it's it's the whole point is like you're being thankful for your august or not your august your, your uh your fall autumn harvest, harvest yeah. uh because you've come to a new place and if you didn't harvest and grow enough food this year uh you were legitimately gonna die so it's a you know be thankful like we grew enough food we have enough preserves to get through the winter let's you know let's celebrate with our last our last harvest yay mm-hmm. woo um so it's not really a, a culture like culturally speaking it's not really a thing in other parts of the world like it's not really really a thing in europe Mm -hmm. um other other parts of the world will have similar like celebrating the end of the harvest season autumn solstice type festivals and festivities but it's not you know like a a a holiday where people get like a day a day off type of thing Yeah, yeah um but also culturally it's a little bit different so like growing up uh i didn't really celebrate like traditional canadian thanksgiving with my parents i knew what it was but like my parents are both jamaican immigrants it's not a holiday celebrated in jamaica Mm -hmm. so you know it was always just like woo we have a day off i mean we'll do like a nice sunday dinner Mm -hmm. um because we have the day off so we might as well but you know i was always allowed as a kid where you know if uh, a friend uh, like a canadian friend who grew up with sort of like the typical canadian thanksgiving dinner if they were having dinner on like the holiday monday if i was allowed to go hang out with them i was allowed to go join them for dinner and so i you know i would get two dinners i would get to have nice sunday dinner with my family and then on yeah, monday yeah. i get to go try like you know turkey potatoes like that whole thing i'm here to impose turkey on you <laughs> <laughs> and so but it's really cool because i the other thing is because it's at the end of the day it's really just being thankful for food i mm-hmm. think the fun part is you can just do doesn't anything matter with who food, you are right? you can just have whatever food you like like, whether it's hot pot Absolutely. or turkey or duck or you something else. You can have else. craft dinner if that's your jam. Exactly. I, you can just have whatever you want. I was thinking about this the other day, and I want to... Everyone has different, like, experiences when it comes to immigrant culture. Um, but my parents, uh, they were in the restaurant industry mm-hmm. when I was growing up. And one of the things that they did... And, and I wouldn't say that they tried to, like, throw themselves... 
like you know headfirst into Canadian culture or whatnot, but they were you know they they were very respectful of it. And uh, one of the things they used to do with the restaurant they used uh, they owned together was we used the the it was in a smaller town. And the restaurant was close to like a senior's home. And we'd always have like a lot of regular seniors come over for food during over the course of the year and whatnot. But my parents would host a Thanksgiving dinner and I think Christmas as well, where they would just bake up. uh, Well, I say bake roast up like a bunch of turkeys, get all the sides going and just invite all the regulars uh, from like the seniors home and around the community, any regular customers could come by and just like grab a plate, sit down and just like, you know, just have a, a, a really big gathering. And this is like when I was pretty young, actually, maybe closer to like seven or so. So it was like, it was kind of really cool to see and, and the community just kind of come together. Like, you know, it was, yeah, so, sort of like supporting our, thanks for supporting our business, but it was also just like, it was nice. Like a lot of those old folks were kind of, you know, my friends in a sense, like, you know, just being a kid and everyone's your friend. And it was kind of, uh, I don't know, like heartwarming. I just thought about it like literally the other day. I just remembered it randomly out of nowhere. And it was just like good times, good community feels, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's just good folks sharing what you have with others. Exactly. You know, making sure that everyone has enough. Exactly. Like that's what it's about. It's you know we all we all are on this rock, uh, and we all have to take care of each other if we're gonna stay on this rock. So, you know, we should celebrate each other and and take care of each other and celebrate that we made it another turn on the rock. Yeah. <laughs> Unless of course, there's twenty thousand people in queue ahead of you. <laughs> then get rid of them all. <laughs> So, Overwatch 2 dropped this week. The second Overwatch. It came out on Tuesday. I was not able to even get into the game to try it out Damn. until Friday. Ooh. Yeah, the, the the release of Overwatch 2 has been a bit rough. Um, They have everything from DDoS issues to people being unable to get into the game to the servers being unstable mm-hmm. uh to NPCs T posing on the maps as you load in to UI bugs uh UE bug it's it's been a it's been an interesting launch uh yeah an interest a very interesting Thanksgiving present for from from Blizzard Entertainment but at least it, it is playable at long last over Thanksgiving weekend we we had the beta back in like what was it June there was the second beta that had Junker Queen finally we have the actual game we can start playing overwatch again with one less teammate as far as it goes the launch the the launch completely killed the hype for me Oh. I was really excited for it. Like, I really wanted to play. Mm-hmm. And I understood. Day one, it's hard to get in. Literally, people were getting 30,000 person queues, 20,000 person queues. Rough. Uh, and that wouldn't be as big of an issue if once you were in, you could actually play for as long as you'd like. A lot of people, they were getting disconnected yep, in the middle of their first game Yikes. and getting oh, kicked back into the 30,000 person queue. Yeah, Yikes. that happened to me. I got like, into a game. Uh, I had the really fun experience of I got in on day three after waiting in a 1,000 person queue. I got into a game with some friends. We played for about 10 minutes. We were halfway through a round. I got disconnected and launched into an 80,000 person queue. And I just said, oh. okay, whatever. I'm not going to play. It's not going to happen today. So, no. like, the last time that I actually got to play it was yesterday afternoon. It, it actually worked a little bit. Uh, this is after after two days in a row where it was down for maintenance for four hours in the evening. Like, Yeah, during hours. prime time. Uh, so I finally got to play a little bit of it yesterday. And, like, I enjoyed it. It was good. But I was hyped for it half a week ago. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, I will say it's also killed the hype for me as well. I'm a bit like, disappointed. Um, I did finally get in to play on Friday to play with friends. 
And I, I did tweet about it a little bit, but I was joking that, oh, wow, the high ELO Q times are back already uh, because quick play matches had for me uh, with a group of friends, we had a quick, we had quick play matches that took 30 to 40 minutes for the Q to find a game. Oh my God. Which was, we were at, at that point, we were playing other games with Overwatch running in the background to see if maybe we would get a game. So I was just legit. I've just been playing Gundam Evolution. Mm -hmm. And whenever someone would be like, want to play Overwatch? I'm like, I'm already playing Overwatch. I'm playing Robot Watch. <laughs> Have you given up on Apex with me already? No, no, of course not. I said this last episode. <laughs> that level of disappointment is rare. We can't get into Overwatch Two. Uh, Gundams is like I enjoy it, but it's not an everyday sort of thing. Mm. I'm, I feel like I'm good for some Apex this week. All right, yeah, let's go. Yeah, definitely, definitely, a game mm. that we can queue and actually play. Yes. You can play some Faz in keeping with the that too, the and of keeping the month. with Spooky Ooh, also, yeah. Fa well, I haven't played Faz for months actually at this point. I've because... never played, so this will be a fun experience <gasps> for me. Do you have it? I believe I have it sitting in my Steam account, and if I don't, I think I'm getting it soon. Oh, this they, would they, be fun! They, like the dev does push out quite a few updates. It would be mm -hmm. a and good they have time had some major played. ones. Yeah, yeah. There, um, there have been some major ones, so this would be a good time to get reintroduced to the game I, for Spooky. I Mom. forget. Do remind sure. me. Are any of us like actually scaredy cat? I'm I not. Know. I mean, I don't she says that do well when she's Stu. literally rocked the house screaming at Phasmo. Because I'm having fun. Because it's yes, loud. That's it's not, scary. That's I'm having a good time. As, as being the scared. Like, I can't, yeah, I can't do it because I'm too scared is a, is a different thing than I'm like pumped up about like how crazy things are right now. But like, yeah. that's, that's the quote unquote scary. So like, I feel that. Faz is not my usual jam, but because it's a collaborative game where you're playing with people, not against people, I'd be fine. Mm -hmm. If this was Dead by Daylight, I'd be like, no, I'm out. Uh, okay. But this is not the kind of thing where I would have the same reaction as, per, like, say, Fatal Frame, for example. Like, oh, not, not, the yeah. same, Fair enough. not the same feeling. Not the not same the level same of fear. True, true. Fatal Frame is way better at building atmosphere than Phasmo. That's that's actually my biggest problem with Phasmo. It feels like when you lose Phasmo, it comes out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. really? A little yeah. bit. A little bit. Hmm. To me, it doesn't build but it up is the an, atmosphere at all. It's, it's an indie just, dev game. There's, there's going to be some pitfalls sometimes. Yeah, but I mean... Sometimes, like, when when the ghost hunts you and you die, there's times where you legitimately don't even realize it's hunting. It just, oh, there's hands reaching from behind my screen. Peekaboo, I'm it dead touch, now. It touching me. Touching yeah. you. sketchy, yeah. one touchy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I, it's funny because, like, the group that I played Phasma with the most, um, two and a half of them, because one of them has okay map sense because they play a lot of, of games and stuff, but the other two just have terrible, terrible map sense and sense of direction. And even though they've played a lot, there's like some maps that are actually quite large, like the school and like uh, the asylum. The school map is huge. Yeah, they're but so like, big. I, I have, I have, like you know, the the humble brag of just impeccable direction like i know where i am in a map pretty much at all times so the way we Jay always have to split pigeon yeah the way we always have to split that like when we're looking for clues and stuff is that i can never they never just let me play by myself even though i'm happy to play by myself because they're like i'm gonna get lost in the dark <laughs> and i'm like that's not my problem and sometimes i'll just run off anyway <laughs> so i'll be like you're like good know. luck sayonara <laughs> yeah. uh. Your, your old Left for fear. Dead strats coming back for Phasmo. It's wow. true. I'm, I'm a solo <laughs> gamer. So what I'm hearing is Nancy's going to be the first to die every round. No. I will protect you, Nancy. No. Dio will be, will be my fine. buddy. You I will, will be, be our buddy. dark buddy. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have a very, I have a high tendency of if there's a bug in Phasmo, I will encounter it and die as a result. So... I will probably go first and then you will probably follow right after. That's okay. <laughs> As long as we're together, <laughs> that's all Indeed. that matters. Exactly, the power of friendship power of survives friendship. even death. Exactly. 
Yeah, I think there was an uh, I think there was an update for Phasmo very recently because I actually just saw like I logged in this morning uh, or when I logged on to my computer this morning, Steam started up, told me I had three new inventory items and they're all like tarot cards from yeah. Phasmo. Interesting. No. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah, there's got to be something. Yeah, they updated a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, we should hmm. do a little, a little spooking, a little yeah, hunting. We definitely should. A little hunting, uh, and the viewers should do a little, a little, a, a handful of things. Whatever brings you joy in Spoopy Month, make sure you make time for it too. Yeah. True, be true. If, even if that's no Spoopy Month for you, indeed. That's okay. if, even if it's saying that I don't like Spoopy Month, it's too spoopy for me. That's also valid. That's Doubt. usually me. Disagree. <laughs> we'll Get protect scared. you now. No, increase your blood pressure. <laughs> if you die, you die. Dying in a game is not going to be... I imagine I will get desensitized to it very quickly. It's just when games actually do manage to scare me, they usually leave some kind of mental or emotional trauma scars behind. Mm. Emotional damage. <laughs> emotional. Very Escape emotional. the D word. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yep. Uh, all right well i think that pretty much wraps it up for this episode so we thank you for listening and we hope you had a good time with us we will uh you know hope you all enjoy your turkey miss have a good food coma and you know till the next time we Catch will see you time. on the other side next time on Ura fest z z